I'm about to embarrass myself here, guys. That is me in the fifth grade and again in the sixth grade. So when I was growing up, I was absolutely obsessed with playing guitar, almost as obsessed as I am with making things now. So it was inevitable that eventually I'd have to make my own guitar. So when I started thinking about what guitar I wanted to make, the one that came immediately to mind was Steve Vai's Ibanez Gym with its swirl finish from his Passion and Warfare album cover. So I'm gonna do my best to replicate that guitar and all the features that make it unique, along with that swirl finish, which we'll do by hydro dipping in the second half of the video. So what you've seen so far is me using a plywood template to trace the body shape onto a basswood guitar blank and then cut it out with my jigsaw. I'll come back to talk a little bit more about these templates later on, but for now, let's move on with shaping the guitar body. I used double-sided tape to secure the template to the body and then took it over to my router table. I cut as high on the sides as my one inch template bit would allow. I then flipped it over without removing the template and switched to a flush trim bit to flush cut the other half. Since flush trim bits are more prone to deflection than template bits, I should have removed the template from the body and cut as high as possible on the other side with the template bit before flipping it. But I didn't, and so this happened. This sucks. I got some really nasty tear out. Since the basswood guitar blanks are pretty inexpensive, I decided to use this one as a practice body and to cut a second body that would be the keeper. I also use this as an excuse to upgrade to a beefier cast iron Rockler router table, which would be less prone to vibration and tear out. The new router table setup did the trick. The edges were really clean all the way around the keeper body. Before we go further, let's take a quick look at how I made the templates. I found a free and accurate 3D model of the gym guitar on a website called GrabCat. I used this 3D model to create 2D models for all the templates. Now I'm going to be cutting out the templates on my Inventables X-Carve, and to do that I just brought those 2D models into Inventables free easel software. This was a super simple process and I'll have links to the X-Carve and a free easel sign up in the description below. made multiple templates which, as you saw, allowed me to cut the body from the blank and also are going to make it possible to simply align and route the various body cavities needed for the neck, pickups, bridge, and electronics. With the templates in hand, I moved on to routing the cutouts for the pickups, bridge, tremolo, and neck on the front of the guitar body. I then flipped over the body to route the back with one cavity for electronics and a second cavity for the springs and inner workings of the Floyd Rose style floating tremolo that I'm using. So some of the cavities have multiple depths and for those I made these little inserts that go into the larger cavities so you can cut out the multiple depths in multiple passes. I then drilled the holes for the bolt-on neck using the template I made to keep the drill straight as I went. With the neck holes drilled, I flipped over the guitar to do a test fit of the neck. And to my relief, it fit nice and snug. To shape the back contour, I just used the draw knife and rasps. And I was a little bit apprehensive about this because I haven't used hand tools that much. But I have some hand tools that were passed on to me from my grandfather, so I was pretty excited to try them out. To carve the forearm rest contour on the front of the body, I used a block plane in addition to a draw knife and rasps. I don't know if this is really the best way to do it, but sometimes the best way to do something is the way that gets it done.
I then got a bit ahead of myself and sprayed some primer onto the guitar. The only reason I'm telling you this is so you'll understand why the guitar all of a sudden turns white in the next few steps. Back in the shop, I used a chisel to finish shaping the monkey grip handle cutout, one of the gym guitar's signature features. I moved on to the second signature feature of the gym, the Lion's Claw Tremolo Cutout. The Lion's Claw is actually six parallel grooves that are scooped out under the tremolo and allow the whammy bar to be pulled up higher than it otherwise would. To cut the pickup selector slot, I used the technique I picked up where else on YouTube. I started with an X-Acto knife to mark the line and open up one end of the slot, and then handheld a jigsaw blade and used it to cut the rest. It's a bit of a hack, but it worked pretty darn well. I drilled the holes for the volume and tone knobs, and speaking of those electronics, I want to talk quickly about where the neck and electronics came from before we get to hydro dipping. We're almost there. I found a scratch and dent Ibanez Jim Jr. online for about 200 bucks. The body was pretty dinged up, but the neck and electronics were in great shape, so it was perfect for this project. While I'm disassembling that guitar, I want to take a minute to thank this video's sponsor, Sprayway, for supporting this channel and making this build possible. Sprayway is a US company that's been around since 1947. They offer a complete line of consumer and professional spray cleaners. I've personally been using Sprayway cleaners for about the last six months and found them great. And I don't have a time to go through all their products here right now. But I want to take a minute and talk about their granite and marble cleaner. So as many of you know, I do a lot of concrete projects. Concrete is similar to marble in that it requires a mild pH neutral cleaner to keep it new and shiny looking. So I get a lot of questions about how to keep concrete tables and countertops clean in the long run. Now I'm happy to report that the Sprayway cleaner does exactly that. And obviously the granite marble cleaner and polish will also work on granite and marble and it'll clean and polish any sealed stone surface nicely. And because it's a non-abrasive formula, it meets a unique set of challenges presented by this epoxy and concrete table because it won't scratch the epoxy when I'm cleaning the concrete. Now I've also been using Sprayway's glass cleaner and other products throughout my home. I'll have a link below in the description if you want to purchase them online. You can also get Sprayway products at your local brick and mortar retailer. Thanks again to Sprayway for supporting this channel and making this video possible. And now let's get to the hydro dipping. So I know what you're thinking. Hey Mike, why is there so much time left in this video? All you've got to do is spray some paint into water and then dunk the guitar and that's it, right? Well, I wish it was that easy. So before I even tried dipping a guitar, I tested out a whole bunch of different paints and processes, including Rust-Oleum spray paint, one-shot enamel, Humbrol enamel, and Magic Marble. So if you'd like to see a comparison of all these different paints and the ways to get the best results with all of them, there's enough info there for a whole other video, so leave a comment below if you'd like to see that. For now, I'll just say that Magic Marble was far and away the best choice for getting reliable results swirl dipping a guitar. So that's what I went with. For the first dip, I primed the body with black paint. I used a 32 gallon trash can as the dipping chamber and filled it up with water from my hose. I used a stirring stick to slowly swirl the paint until it had a marbled look on the surface that I liked, and then I went for it. When I pulled the guitar out of the water, it wasn't the vision I had in my head. 
the swirl lines were thinner than I wanted, which meant I'd somewhat over swirled the paint before dipping. And there was an unsightly glob of paint in one spot on the front. So I decided to sand the guitar down and dip again, this time using fluorescent green primer instead of the black and swirling the paint a little less before the dip. I also decided to try using a storage bin with a larger opening at the top than the trash can. This provides a larger surface area for the paint and thus more paint. I was hoping that the additional paint would eliminate the fading effect towards the top of the body that I got on the first dip. With that, I crossed my fingers and went for it again. So when I pulled the guitar out, I totally thought I was done and that was it. But here's the problem, guys. I have to admit, I was kind of addicted to hydro dipping guitars at this point. And so I went back and I dipped that first practice body that I made and some of the templates. And well, let me show you. This blue one was one of the practice bodies and I posted this on Instagram and people were really digging the blue and so was I. So I kind of decided that I would really like to have some blue in the color combo on the keeper body. Uh, and then you've got this template. So when I looked at this, it just had this awesome swirl pattern back and forth, really clean lines. It was just like exactly the pattern, albeit different colors that I wanted. And so, well, after seeing these, yeah, I had to sand and dip again. So I'd actually used the 32 gallon round trash can for that really great pattern on the template. I realized it wasn't a matter of there not being enough surface area to dip a guitar. It was just a matter of putting more paint onto the surface before dipping. Also ran out of the fluorescent green primer. So I primed this one with blue paint. So this time the swirl pattern was exactly the back and forth shape that I wanted. Really cool. I thought for a second I was done, but the more I looked at it, the colors just weren't right. The blue base made the green magic marble look more like a dark forest green, which was not at all what I was going for. I decided to do one final redip, combining everything I learned and hopefully I'd get it right. Finally, finally, the vision I had in my head was a reality on the guitar. So now that I had the color scheme I wanted, I could move on and dip the headstock to match. With the headstock dipped, I didn't want to give myself any time to change my mind again, so I moved on to clear coating the guitar. For the clear coat, I just followed a really great YouTube tutorial on using Spraymax 2K to get a professional looking finish. I'll let you just check it out there if you want, because I've still got a couple cool customization details that I want to show before we see how the finished guitar looks and sounds. At this point, I was getting pretty darn excited about how the body was looking, and I decided that it could even come to the next level if I used some fluorescent green acrylic to make custom cover plates for the electronics and tremolo on the back of the guitar. 
I used the same 3D model of the guitar to generate 2D models of the cover plates and then used my Inventables X-Carve to cut the cover plates from the acrylic sheet. I also tried to 3D print some custom tone and volume knobs, which went up to 11. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top? These go to 11. Unfortunately, I haven't got these knobs dialed in to fit the electronics that I had yet, so it didn't make it into this build. No promises, but decent chance you'll see knobs that go to 11 in a future build. All right, so I just got back in town from a vacation. While I was gone, I dropped the guitar off with a guitar tech to have him dial everything in, get it plain smooth. Just picked it up. Let's see how it is. I am very happy right now. It is it is what I wanted and it was a lot of work, but yeah, I'm 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 happy with it at the end. So uh, now of course we gotta give it a test and see how it sounds. And the caveat, you know, I was obsessed with guitar back in high school, but in the last 20 years or so, unfortunately, just life has gotten in the way and I've barely gotten to play at all. So I'm a little out of practice, but we'll give it a go. All right, guys, so apologies that I'm a little bit rusty when it comes to playing, or a lot rusty, but the build, I'm really happy with. Guitar came out exactly like I wanted. If you dug it too, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Make sure to subscribe and bell too, because I've got another guitar build in the works that might even be core. I don't know, I'm pretty excited about it. We'll see. I've also got a playlist of non-guitar builds right there. I think you should check out. I think you'll dig it too. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time.